Oh, I would just like to start our class. Very good. So this week the class is on Parashat Mishpatim. Uh, the Parsha has a lot, a lot, a lot of mitzvahs in it. Ve'ila Mishpatim, and these are the mitzvah that are Hashem, <clears throat> some of the mitzvah that Hashem gave us, and Hashem told Moshe to teach it to the Eden. And today's class we wrote to fix and not to break. It has many, many mitzvahs. And I decided to pick on one of them. One of the mitzvot that, that the Torah speaks about, and I'm sure some of us remember from other years, is that it says that when you travel in the street and you see a donkey um, that is falling, it's like a car that the wheels broke, basically. You know, that was the that was the cars of those days, right? So the donkey is walking and he has so much luggage on top of him, so many boxes, it's so heavy that he can't, poor thing, cannot walk anymore. And he is just like falling down. He is sitting down because it's too heavy. And the donkey is not of your friend. It's a donkey of, a, of your enemy, of somebody that you don't like, that you had a dispute with, somebody who you're not friends with. What should you do? can think, well, I don't want to help. It's not my friend. Let him worry about the big luggage, the big stuff that he's carrying, all the stuff he's carrying. Let him take off some so the donkey can continue and so on and so forth. And the Torah says, if you see it, you have to help. You cannot say, well, I don't want to help. If you saw it, that means that Hashem had a reason that you saw that particular scene and you have to help. But the Torah is saying as well, Azov Tazov Imo, you should help with him, which means the owner can say, Well, you have the method to help. If you see a donkey that is falling off its feet, basically cannot carry the heavy load, the load is very heavy. So you have to take some of the load off. You have to help the donkey get up and go, and you have to help with the load. So the owner can say, Well, you, my friend, or not my friend, whoever you are, you have the mitzvah to help me. So I'm just going to stand, you know, as we say, cross my hands and, and watch you. No. The Torah says, Azov ta'azovimo. You should help him with him, which means with the owner. If the owner or whoever is riding the donkey doesn't want to help, then you don't have the mitzvah to help. He cannot say, take advantage of you. You have the mitzvah to help me. I'm going to stand and do nothing. Stand by and watch. So we have the two things. First of all, you have to help. You cannot say, well, it's not my friend's load. It's not my friend's donkey, my friend animal. I don't want to help. You have to help. And then the other condition is that that person has to help as well. He cannot just make you do it. Now we're going to learn the spiritual part of this mitzvah. What is the spiritual part of the mitzvah? When you see the donkey chamor sonacha of the person that you hate or that he hates you, sonacha, somebody that you hate or he hates you. Not nice words, but not your friend. What does it mean? Torah, the Chassidus is telling us, the Balshantav is telling us, when you see the chamor, you can read it in different words in Hebrew, homer. Homer is the material, the um, the stuff that the physical part when you look at the physical part of yourself okay it's very deep again when you see the material the homer the physical part you will see that the physical part of yourself your body is really it really hates you what does it mean what do you mean the body hates me who am i i'm not the body I am the neshama, I am the soul. What makes me alive, not the body? God forbid if somebody passed on, the body is still there, the body can be intact, but the soul of the body, God forbid, and then the person is not alive. So who are we? We are the neshama, we are the soul. Obviously the soul dresses itself in the body. So the Torah is telling us in the spiritual part of the story that when you look, at the material, at the physical part of our body, we can think it really hates us. What does it mean it hates me? Because the body likes only physical part stuff. Doesn't like me doing mitzvahs. The body wants me to eat and sleep and enjoy. And the body, the, the physical part doesn't necessarily want me to eat healthy. 
doesn't want me to exercise. The body is lazy. The physical part is just, just eat chocolates and eat drink Coke and eat chips and eat white bread and eat all the stuff that is not good for you. Who cares? But when we really think about it, we see that the, 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 the body, the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination really hates us, doesn't try to, is not excited for me to be healthy, not excited for me to do mitzvot. But when we see it, we say, okay, we know what is the truth. We have to help it. It's like this donkey that is falling down that cannot carry the heavy load. Then what do I have to do? I have to make sure, hello, Marina, nice seeing you. I have to help the body. I have to explain to myself, well, I know I have to eat. And I have to try as much as possible to eat healthy. I have to make sure that the food is kosher. I have to make sure to make blessings because I know that my body is really to serve my soul. And I have to remember what is more important. It's not the body, it's the soul. And Hashem gave me the body. I have to work with the body in order to do the mitzvot of the soul. So the person cannot say, well, you know, I have to do mitzvot, so I don't have to care take care of the body. Let me just let that person help me. And that's all, like we said in the story, it says, Azov ta azov imo. you have to help with him, which means I shouldn't break as we call the class. Do we have to fix and not to break. We shouldn't break our bodies. What does it mean? There are two ways. Um, there are two ways how we can become better people. There's one way that we can take the way people have done, actually many years ago, people were stronger. They would fast. They would eat very little bit. They would sleep very little bit. They would try to break the body. They would try, that's what we call the class, to fix and not to break. They would try to break the body in a way that the body should not, to take away the enjoyment, to eat very little bit, to sleep very little bit, to, to live in very you know, dire conditions and so on. So then you get used to that you shouldn't like to have nice clothing. You shouldn't enjoy nice food. You should teach yourself to do very minimal things for your physical body, just what you really need very, very little. And this way you will teach yourself that the spiritual parts are more important. The mitzvot are important. Torah learning is important. Health is important and not to indulge and not to do things that are good for you. What Hasid is teaching us that nowadays, this is not really the right thing to do, the right way to go. We are not very strong. If we're gonna fast too much and we're not gonna eat good food and we're not gonna take care of our bodies, we're gonna become very weak. And if we become very weak, then we have no strength and we don't have simcha, we don't have any happiness and any goodwill to do the mitzvot of Hashem, you know, the Baal Shem Tov says something very important to remember that I'll translate into English, that a small hole in the body, a small hole in the body is a big hole in the neshama, which means, a Dayan, sweetie, if you don't mind, if you put yourself on mute, then there will be less background noise, if that's okay. Can you hear noise? I can hear a little bit of noise. Maybe it's coming like from a television. From Maybe. a television yeah. or something so like that. So put it yeah. on mute. All right, let me see. Okay. Yeah. Only if you can, but you can still hear me. Hear us. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Just the background noise. Thank you so much. So I want to repeat it again. It's something very important for us to remember because many times people think it's not important for us to take care of our body. No, it is. We're not allowed to break our body. We have to fix it. We have to fix it in a way that it should want to do mitzvot. <clears throat> so the Val Shantov says, a small hole in the body is a big hole, God forbid, in the neshama. Which means, which translates, if we don't take care of ourselves and we have a small hole, we are not as healthy, we're not as strong, we're not as vibrant in our physical body, then that puts a big hole in the neshama. Why? If I'm not strong enough, I cannot do as many good deeds. I cannot help a friend. I don't have enough energy to pray well. I don't have enough energy to 
cook good food and tasty food for Shabbos and invite guests and so on and so forth, as we understand. So it is very important for us to, to take care of our bodies. It's important for us not to break our bodies, but to help our bodies to be strong. But with it, like we spoke about the example that the Torah gives us the mitzvah of the donkey, that you take the load and you help the donkey together to get stronger, we tell ourselves, right, I want to do mitzvot with my body. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to be strong. So it's easier for me to walk to shul. I live far from shul. I don't want to drive. I'm going to be strong enough so I can walk to shul a long distance as I couldn't do before, but now I'm going to be strong enough. I'm going to be strong enough to pick up heavy loads to deliver food for someone. I'm going to be strong enough to be able to cook, as I said before, to invite guests. It's important for me to eat healthy. So I'm happy. I'm in a good mood when we and I'll sleep well. It's important to sleep. If I don't sleep, you know, when we don't sleep, we are tired. And when we are tired, usually we are not in a happy mood. And then we're not as excited to do mitzvot. And I think we discussed it previously that one of the things that mentioned, I think it's in Chumash Dvarim, the last Chumash in the Torah, that it says one of the reasons that Hashem, that the Eden went to Galut, went to exile because they did not worship Hashem, they did not do the mitzvot out of happiness, out of simcha. They had everything they needed. They had food, they had health, they had everything, and they didn't appreciate it. And you think, like, what's the big deal? So I didn't do it with happiness. I still delivered the food to my friend. I gave it to her with a sour face. So what? So I didn't do it with happiness. It's not so what. Because if we don't do something with happiness, with time, we do less and less and less because I don't enjoy doing it. And it's very hard to do something that you don't enjoy for a long time. You can force yourself so much. After a while, it becomes very, very difficult. And then we might stop doing it. So if I want to enjoy the day of Shabbos, the day of Shabbos is so special. It's tomorrow night in Shabbos. And this Shabbos girls is a very special Shabbos. It's Shabbat Mevarchim. is the Shabbos that we bless the new month. And I'm going to look now at the calendar. The new month um, starts. Oh, I'm already on Pesach. It's the month before Pesach. It's the month of Purim. And we're going to have a big party on Purim, God willing. Actually, we're renting the place next to Chabad, the Hungarian Center. So we should have more place. And Rosh Chodesh is next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, Monday night. Right, actually, right after Family Day. Tuesday and Wednesday, two days Rosh Chodesh is very special. And this, this Shabbos, we bless the new month. And we know that uh, Adar, the month of Adar, that's what we're going to learn next week, God willing, the month of Adar is the month of Simcha, the month of happiness. Happiness is very crucial in our lives. So, so crucial, anything we do. I do something for my parents, I do something for my sibling, for my child, for my spouse. Whatever I do, I have to do with happiness. When you do it with happiness, you look better, you do it better. There's no words to describe. Anything we do. And now this Shabbos is very special. We're going to do whoever can. We have the custom to say Tehillim, to, to finish the whole book of Psalms. Even if you do a little bit, it's good. And we say a special blessing. We bless the new month. We want to have a month of health, of happiness, no sorrow, nothing said, God forbid, should happen. Omen Mashiach should come already. Omen even before the month of Adar. If you are happy, you're doing things in a completely different way. I, I can tell you now about myself. I'm extremely tired. I'm very, very tired. Just lack of sleep. I woke up today early. Shlemelo woke me up 6.30 his time because he got up to go daven, but he was tired, whatever. We all have our stories. Here it was 4.30 in the morning. I came late last night. Our plane was delayed, so we came late. So I ended up sleeping probably three, four hours. I couldn't sleep more. I got up to organize stuff in the house because I couldn't sleep. I was the whole day at Chabad. I went before the class, Baruch Hashem. Somebody had to go to Mikvah, so we went to Mikvah. I just came back. It's a lot. If I wasn't excited, if I wasn't happy to see all of your beautiful faces or to see your names, even those of you, I don't see your faces. I know how beautiful you look. To hear nice things, how beautiful the bar mitzvah was. And I came home and, you know, the benches are here. The cars are here. This is here. You know, the whole thing. I do miss the kids. 
I do miss the family. Everybody was here. It was wonderful. I spoke to Shlaimala. He said, Mommy, I miss you so much too, you know, but it's wonderful. We had something wonderful we had. And I was so excited. We'll get together and we're going to learn about the class that is teaching us that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our body. When we look at our body, we can think, yeah, it can hate me. What does it mean the body hates me? I'm just repeating for those of us who came late. The body hates me, which means the physical part of the body, just the physicality of the world might come in a way that it hates Yiddishkeit. The Yetzirah, the evil nation, the body is telling me, why do you want to go pick up the phone and speak to a friend that really insulted you last year or yesterday or a month ago. Why do you want to call her and wish her good Chavez? Why do you want to call and ask her how her daughter is doing? She was so rude to you a while ago. And then you say, no, 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 no. This is not my neshama. This is not my soul. This is my body, the physical part that doesn't like spiritual things. That's the one that is speaking to me. I'm not going to listen to it. I will pick up the phone and go do it. I go do the mitzvah. I'll work with my body to change it. I'm going to use my mouth, my hands, all the physical things that Hashem gave me. I'll do mitzvahs with it. But it's much easier to do it when you're happy. I'm happy that I'm a Jewish woman. I'm happy I'm a Jewish girl. I'm happy I'm a good person that God created me, that I have Jewish friends, other friends, whatever it is. God gave me so much. And I'm going to use all the resources God gave me, a brain, money, goodwill, whatever I have, I will use it for a mitzvah. I'll prepare for Shabbat. I don't have to prepare a whole big feast. I'll prepare a big feast that is good that I can do and I'll invite someone. And if I cannot invite someone, I'll enjoy it, whether it's with myself, if I'm home alone, with my spouse, with a friend, do kiddush, do the blessing on the challah, eat the food and thank Hashem and just be happy. It's so, so important. It's so important for us to remember that we don't want to break our bodies. We want to fix it. What we mean to fix it, to exercise, to be healthy, to be well. I don't want to mention, but one of the person, people here on the class that is on our group today, we spoke today and I know somebody's, their child is going through some procedure next week, some surgery. We want to wish them all the best. Only health, only happiness, thank goodness they found out that there's something small that they have to deal with. And God willing, it's going to be something small and they'll have speedy recovery and everything will be well. We always have to be happy. We always have to wish the best. And uh, before we're going to hear from Sabrina a few words, I want to say again that this month is very special, the month of Adar. It's so special to be uh, positive every day of the month. And we have done it some years ago that every day of the month, we wanted to be happy and we wanted to thank Hashem. We used one minute and we can start doing it Monday night or Tuesday. We took one minute in the day and we thanked Hashem for the good things that we have. And just for anything, thank you Hashem for having a warm home. Thank you Hashem for having... Thank you, thank you, Eugenia, yeah. Thank you, Hashem, that I have forks to eat with. Because sometimes people eat with their hands. They don't have forks. There might be somewhere that they cannot obtain forks. Thank you, Hashem, that I have a good health system. Thank you, Hashem, that I have a family. Thank you, Hashem, that I have food on the table. Thank you, Hashem, I have a warm bed to go to. And all of a sudden, the minute is gone. You know, and you think, I have so many more things to thank Hashem for. And then the following day, let's think other things. Thank you, Hashem, this morning. Again, I could have been in a bad mood. I mean, it was a little bit difficult. I was tired. And then I told Shlomo, you know, we were speaking for an hour. It's time for you to go to school. We tried to solve the little dilemmas that he was dealing with and so on. And then I could have been in a bad mood, but I wasn't. I was tired, but I was in a good mood. Thank you, Hashem, that I have a son. Baruch Hashem, that he turned bar mitzvah. Baruch Hashem, that he cares to go to Minyan, but he was tired, he didn't have a ride, he had to take his bike, whatever, little things. It's hard for a 13-year-old to be away from home, and it's hard to get up six o'clock in the morning and go out to Dav and go to Mikvah. No, it's not easy. So I helped him with it, but I wasn't mad, I wasn't upset, I was tired, but I was happy. So that's why I was able to carry on my day, and then when I got a phone call yesterday when I was heading to the airport, and I see the phone, you know, the caller ID, and I see the, the the lady, the girl's name, and I go, wow, I'm so glad she's calling me again. 
because last time we went before, we had the bar mitzvah about a week or so before. I said, that's great. We're going to mikveh again. I was so happy. I could have said, oh, but I'm going to be just coming to town. I knew I'll be very tired, but it was great because we remember what is it? Why is, what is our life here if not to do favors for each other, if not to do favors in a physical sense and how much more so in a spiritual sense? And it was wonderful. We had such a good time last week that we spent together with Sabrina, with Marcy. We were sitting with thousands of women in the room and we all shared the same story. We all have the same, um, how can I say, uh, challenges. This one a little bit more, this one a little bit less, but we gave, um, you know, just being together, so many people together, we give so much strength to each other. And we have to be very happy where we are. I do want to share one story with a lady, forgot her name, uh, the Shluch of the Rebbe that lives in China. And she shared what she had when they went back, when COVID was officially over in China, I guess it was, I don't know if it was half a year ago, a year ago, they went back. They had to make tests. For 14 days, they were clean and they were um, quarantining. I forgot already that word. But then the 14th day, the, the Chinese government decided to tell them that they tested positive. I don't know if they were positive. They felt normal. And they told them that the, it was a scary story. They told them that... The, Sorry, the rule in the, the country is in China that if they have COVID, they have to go to a hospital for, it was like a enormous long time, I think like two and a half months. They'll have to go to the hospital, but they have to go to separate hospitals, the adults and the children. Well, when she was speaking, it was just like at that time, she had, the youngest was two months old, a baby, seven children, the oldest 10 or 11, to leave them alone in China, in a foreign place, in a different hospital. They tried to speak to the to the doctor, because the doctor didn't know, then he, he called, the rabbi called right away the, uh, US, the Israeli consulate, said, can you help? They said, there's nothing we can do with China. They tried, they prayed, they tried, they prayed that this. I don't know how long they waited. And they said, there's nothing you can do. You have to understand that you and I are in our country and you have to obey by our laws. I don't remember how many days they were there and they davened so much and everybody davened. And in the end, they spoke with the head doctor, with the governor. I don't remember the officials. It was such a big miracle that they allowed them to be with their children, that's right, Holly, in the, but those few hours of the day that they were, that they knew that they were afraid that the government is just going to separate them and there's nobody to talk to in that place, just that fear of somebody, of leaving little kids. I mean, I don't know how the Chinese kids survived there. And she spoke, she said that they stayed in the children's hospital with all the kids. And every night, you know, they made activities for the kids and so on. Those poor little Chinese kids would come and join them and they would read to them and they would give them love because those kids were without their parents. And they told them that they were the only ones in the history there since that COVID thing that they started that they didn't allow, like so cruel, didn't allow children to be with their parents. They had to be in separate hospitals. I don't know why. They allowed only them. It was like the biggest miracle. I mean... Two months old baby, the baby was probably a nursing baby, like it's unheard of. What a miracle, what a big, great miracle they had. I think they came there, they said it was around Hanukkah time, and they came out closer to Pesach. What a miracle it was that they didn't have to stay there. Pesach, then she said all the problems they had with Pesach, with the matzah and whatever, and they survived there with the food because the other families that already were in China the other Chabad families sent them food. Thank goodness that they helped them, that they allowed them to deliver them send the food and toys and, and activities and just things. And they really used that time. They said that later on, they look back now, it was very special two and a half months that they 
spend quality time with the children because they couldn't do anything else. They weren't allowed to go out and nothing else. And obviously they gave as much love as they were able to to the other Chinese children that were there without their parents and needed that love and warmth and so on. That was just one of the stories that, you know, that I heard that Shluchos shared. You know, many shared stories. Not everybody, obviously. Every year they just choose some people to share some things. I remember I shared our story when we just moved there. It was in the early, when we moved there in 88, 89, but I spoke in the early 90s, you know, how we came, how you started a new place. And, you know, we all learn from each other. Baruch Hashem. So special Shabbos, special teaching. We're going to get take, we're going to take care of ourselves, of our bodies, and we're going to teach ourselves how to use all the goodness that people that I, people that I felt very uncomfortable being around because the biggest fear for, I'll speak for me, is that appearing like a fraud, a person that is coming into something that I don't belong in. And it's very intimidating as a, as a Jewish person, a woman for me to, it's like, it's amazing. You're sitting around with all these religious, righteous people and they all are kind and they're good and they're, they're nice and they're sympathetic and they don't judge. And my life was always, you know, you're always judged, you're at work, you know, you never know what people are thinking, you're untrustworthy of them. And all of a sudden you're in a world of Jewish people that are kind and, and they're always everything. You can waking up to them is amazing. Oh, you're so amazing. And, and I always feel funny. Like, no, no, it's nothing really. And being around and Rachel is a very busy woman. I've learned that for sure, because if it's, <laughs> Being with her, she's most of the time working. And, uh, but it, it's an amazing thing. I think it would be nice if, if more women in our community could come. It's, it's definitely an eye opener into a lifestyle that's, they take the mundane and they elevate it to such an extent that everything that all of us Canadian Albertans do, it's, it just doesn't touch any of the things that they do. For a woman to live in a two-bedroom apartment in a not-so-great area with six or seven children, to me, how can I fetch? How can I? What's my biggest problem? I have no big problems, thank God. But these women smile, and they're modest, and they're kind, and they're and not simple, physically simple, but mentally, they are... They are so high, and I, I, I want to be like that. And it's a bit, it's a long road for me, but I'm so thrilled that I got to be around. It's it's a sorority of Judaic sisters, uh, and uh, they love each other and they're kind. Essie Essie Groner's mother came up and said, "Here's a dollar. I want you to you know make a donation." And I'm thinking, what's a dollar? A dollar is nothing. I'm embarrassed. Oh, here's a dollar. I would be like, no, but it's, I think she's just carrying on where the, where the Rebbe did. And I learned a lot about uh, the Rebbe's wife. Uh, she was an incredible woman and she. Sorry, she was? Did... Sorry one minute, was? Yeah. Right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Sabrina, continue. Sorry. Oh, no, no. She just, she devoted her life. I mean, she had, I mean, as far as we know, I mean, we know we come back three times, but the precious life that she had on the earth with the Rebbe and he was gone and she waited up for him and she would have a lights on and a meal for him. And to me, that is such self-sacrifice and never complained and I just thought wow I'm so glad I went I think if you would any of you can make it it's not expensive it's affordable everyone nobody's flashy or nobody's trying to outdo anybody you would love it it's it's a good place to really think about how lucky we are to be with the jewels of Judaism because that's what Judaism is it's a diamond so if we if we're leading secular or I'm going to use the word goyesha. I know people don't like it. I love it though. If we look <laughs> at goyesha life, I think we're 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 cheating ourselves. So I thank you, Rachel, for letting me be there. That's it. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Sabrina. You spoke so well. Thank you. Now that, that's so true. But Sabrina tried saying about the Rebbe and the Rebbe's wife, because the Rebbe was always giving his time to the people, to us. The Rebbe would two, three times a week stay till three, four o'clock in the morning having private audiences with, with private people. I never... I, I never went. We, we went when there were a lot of people. It was already later on, but in the early years, the Rebbe would see my father went many, many times. He was there, you know, and the Rebbe soon would wait up. She wouldn't go to sleep. She would wait up for the Rebbe. So when he came home at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., there was a warm meal and whatever. And then she had her friends that she spent time with, but she, yeah, it was not her husband and she didn't have any physical children of her own. So it was a big sacrifice, that's what Sabrina was saying. That's true. And, um, you know, it's very nice, very sweet how you're saying it, you know, how people are, everybody accepted you and in, uh, accept everybody, you know, people come to shul and you have people that are very religious, people who are not, but we all eat and we all there and there are many people that come there that are not Jewish, that we, we have to be a light to the nation when King Shlomo, when Shlomo Amelech built the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple in Yerushalayim, the first Beit HaMikdash, he had, there is a prayer that he said to Hashem and he said, God, I want you to listen in this home, everybody should be able to come, Jews and non-Jews alike, and you should hear everyone's prayers. And it was known that everybody used to come to Davan to, to pray in the Beit HaMikdash. Now that's for sure. And I want to mention that uh, Sabrina and Marcy had, we all had the privilege last Shabbat, we ate at um, our first cousin, uh, my husband, Menachem's first cousin, that he's a scribe, fight 11, right? Mm -hmm. And he's a scribe, and he was here when there was the, we brought the Torah, when we had a heritage park, he came, he was the scribe, he was writing, people were watching, very, very nice people with the kids, they opened their home, and they stayed there, and we had the meals there with the children, it was very, very nice. And as Sabrina explained, uh, described, yeah, there are many people that have small homes, and in a physical sense, you can think, oh, they might be so miserable, but they're not. They're so happy. The house has stayed with also a family member and Kinahara. They had so many guests. I stayed in a room together with, with a friend of ours from Israel. It was interesting because, you know, I'm used to, I have my own bedroom, obviously, and I have my own washroom and my own bath and my own, you know, we, we're spoiled. We have it. And here I am in my age. I'm sharing a room with another person, which is you know, it's it's uh, it takes away your privacy. Obviously, when you get dressed, you this, you have somebody else in the room, and on that floor is like the attic there. They renovated, so they made two rooms for guests. That floor was another bedroom, and that bedroom was a family. Actually, the guy that stayed there with his wife, I know the family very well from Israel. We are not related, but like mechutonim, you know, through marriage. But when I left Jesus, he was probably a four-year-old little kid. But anyway, he was there with his wife, with his kids. And so here, me and this other girl that I met, the other lady, and this gentleman with his wife, with his kids, we're all using one shower and one sink, one washroom, right? So you kind of have to take turns. You don't go to the washroom when you want or to the shower when you want. It's, uh, But it was so nice to be there because we all came for a special purpose. It was a very special we can, the Yorset of the Rebbitson, and everybody want to be there. And then the lady of the house, which is, he is also called Levi Matasov, actually, he's a, our nephew, and she is the daughter of my cousin. They both married each other from Israel. So here, they have Kenora, 10 little kids. The oldest one is also Shleim Matasov, he's in the yeshiva, but the nine little kids can order their home. And then she had her brother-in-law with his wife with twins. And then there's another family was there and then another family. Then I come before Shabbos. I said, I thought you had just like three families and us upstairs. And then I see someone else there, Israeli family. I go, oh, do you know, like, how long do you know each other? And she started laughing. She goes, oh, I, we, we met for the last 10 minutes. I said, what do you mean? Somebody met them and they didn't have a place where to be. So they said they're going to be in another area in New York, but they really wanted to be in Crown Heights. They wanted to be in the Rebbe Shul. So they called my niece and they know that she has an open home. And they said, will you take them? So two of her children went to sleep somewhere else for a sleepover and she took the mattresses and she brought it to the basement. So 
I don't know, they had so many people, you know, or, and the nice thing that I liked and I'd like to share, I told her, you know, she's a young girl. She's probably, I don't know, 35, maybe she's 38. I don't know, she's, she's young. And everything was with so much grace and so much happiness. She says, it's so wonderful. I said, you're staying so late to cook. She goes, that's okay. She could imagine to cook for all these people. It was a lot. We did, I didn't eat there. You know, I ate with Sabrina and Marcia at our cousin, the, this um, Levin, uh, the rabbi's cousin, which is our cousin as well, obviously. And she's also a classmate. We ate there. I told her, I just need a place to sleep. I'm not eating by you. Didn't want to give her more work. But all the other people did. And before Shabbos, she says, oh, come, come. Let's eat some from the Shabbos food. I said, no, you cook for the people. She goes, no, no. I had in mind, obviously, I didn't take anything. She was so polite and so calm. So it just, like I miss it. I wanted to tell, I've got to write her a text. I just miss that nice feeling being in her house when it can be so much chaos and so much this all the little kids running around playing nobody's fighting nobody's crying i mean the kids sometimes cry but whatever and people are cooking and everybody's helping and everybody's happy because everybody's doing something there's a purpose there is physically sometimes it can be difficult and it's squishy but there's a purpose we're all there for something nice so when I was sharing the room with it with the other person yet yeah, it was a little bit uncomfortable you know I had my suitcase I had to you know there was no place to put your stuff we hang it together it was you know living from a suitcase for a week taking things out but it felt so good because we were there we were sharing while you know her family my family and it was just so nice to be together, to be able to allow more people to be there. And I thought to myself, how sad would it be if the lady of the house would say, you know what, everybody has to have their own room. So then I wouldn't, I don't know where I would have a place or where she would have a place. It was so nice that we were able to be together and just share. And then in the shul itself, Sabrina can tell you, it was so squashy. There were so many people and everybody wants to be there. So we all try to make place for each other. It's not as comfortable. We all stand close to each other. Some people can last half hour. Some people can last two hours, however long you last, but you want to be there because you feel the holiness. You feel the good part. And Sabrina is right. God willing. Next year, we should speak about it early enough to be able to go. It was very nice. It was a program for the Shluchot, for all the Rebetsons, if I may for the female emissary shluchot for the rabbis, you know, before it was for the rabbis, but in, in November, usually for the men. And then there was a guest program from all the, all the guests that came, like Sabrina and Marcy. And they had programs for them. They had wonderful speakers, right? Very good food and nice, a lot of food, right? <laughs> I gained probably like five, six pounds for just being there because you eat late at night. And the food is so good, the cheesecake and the salmon and the chicken and the meat and the, the salads and the pastry, just like pizzas and oh, too much. And you think, okay, you're going to eat a little bit because we don't have it in Calgary, you know, so readily available. So, but you know what happens? You eat a little, then you eat more, then you eat more. And by the time you come home, it's like, wow. But anyway, now we're going back on our diet. <laughs> I have to interject. I... I'm very jealous that we don't have that kind of a thing here that us women meet on Zoom and then we don't see each other until it's a high holiday or an event. And I'm jealous. I, I wish we had that group where we just all gathered and we did more things like at the Chabad house. But living in Canada, living in Alberta, we're all insulated in our own lives and it's life is really short. It's just too bad. We don't make more of an effort. I wouldn't know how, unless people suggested it. And that would be kind of interesting, but to watch it. I just rose. <laughs> hi. Um, oh, hi, Rosie Gordon. <laughs> hi. I just wanted to send Rachel to you too. So, you know, um, I do three Chabad classes a week and one of them is in LA I live in LA half a year and you know what they do there every Monday night, they have a shiur for women. They do it at different women's houses. They host it. They have a speaker, a topic, food, wine. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. They do it every week in LA, but also, so I do Monday night shiur in LA and then Wednesday I do, I, I'm from Winnipeg. So also Chabad and Rachel, I'm going to forward you an email they sent me, they're doing a fancy thing at Chabad this Sunday. They're having 
a wellness artist, like a whole thing. You have to give like a, a donation and it's just beautiful. They invited me. I said, I can't come. I'm in Calgary, but it is done, Sabrina, throughout the world. Sure. It is. And, we, and we have done it here as well. There were years right. that we did more. We did less. COVID kind of stopped many yeah, things. That's true. People are still a little bit afraid, you know, their flus and stuff. We have done Rosh Chodesh. And right. Scottish once a month will get together. And I did want to start it a while ago. Well, we started our family conversation on Shabbos. About two and a half years mm -hmm. ago, we stopped and we had 20, 25 women come on the Shabbos. You remember wow. upstairs. Yeah. So we want to start that again. And actually, I was thinking, very interesting you bring it up, Sabrina, when I was sitting at the at the convention, at the Kinus, as we call it, and then on the way home. You know, you always have to make good resolutions when you get together and you get so much. I'm not talking about the physical food, which is great as well. You know, <laughs> I just have to work hard on it now to lose those pounds. But that's, you know, that's silly. I'm just saying, but so much power, so much happiness, you know, um, spiritual one and so much strength that we got there from each other. Right. Um, I want to use it in the right way. So I said, you know, we have to get together once a week might be, I mean, Shabbos is great. Whoever can make it once a week might be too much for us here right now. Okay. So winter, driving and this, you know, in the summer, a little bit easier, but now Purim is coming. Hopefully everybody can join. We're going to have a wonderful Purim party. As I mentioned before, the flyers should be going out probably tonight or tomorrow. Um, and uh, Purim is... In about two and a half weeks. Six. March 6th. I'm not going to be here, Rachel. I'm leaving for LA in a couple of weeks. Okay, so you'll be there. But I'm, I'm there for Purim. Purim. Yeah, yeah, everybody always will be able to join us, but maybe after Purim. I'm thinking maybe like once yeah. in three weeks to do something during the week and whoever can make it. We don't have to sit very close because I know some people are still afraid to be in big crowds, but it's not going to be a big crowd. If we are 10 women or 15 women and we don't have to sit so close, you know, to each other. And whoever feels comfortable will come and we have, you know, some dessert, whatever. We don't have to make something too big. That would be nice, Sabrina, as you're saying, Rosie. And, and everybody agrees we'll be able to make it just yeah. to get Well, together. you know, Rachel, we just started it up again in L.A. actually last month. It was still yeah. Zoom. They just yeah. started the houses. Now. Yeah, and many people are starting. Yeah, we a month ago. Homes, we can do in Chabad. We can do yeah. right. It's a very good thing. We've, we've done it also. And the Rosh Chodesh group we have done, I really would like to start. Maybe in the summer will be easier. That every right. Rosh Chodesh we met, whenever Rosh Chodesh was, like if it was a Friday night, then we did it the day before. And we had a different topic or we had questions and answers. And some women like, you know, they hosted it in their homes. The nice thing is that when you host it in your own home, then at times you might invite people that will come to your house, will not come to Chabad house or to another person's home. Right. So it's nice, it just opens, you know, the people that came, but it is nice. It is nice. And and it's a good thing to be jealous of. Sabrina, I, I appreciate that you use that word because it says in the Torah um, that we're not allowed, it said, Lot Achmod, we're not allowed to be jealous. We're not allowed to be jealous of somebody else's property somebody else's spouse somebody That's else's right. wellness somebody else you know it's not good to be jealous but torah says kinat sofrim tarbe when you're jealous a sofrim is scribes which means somebody if you're jealous of somebody who knows who knows sefer books somebody who is more intelligent somebody who does mitzvot somebody who is good um somebody who is on a high level on a spiritual sense this is good. Why? Because when you are jealous of someone like that, not jealous in a bad way that you are, oh, I wish I had it. Yeah, I wish I had it. So you want to be like them. If I'm jealous, why my friend drives a Ferrari, or why my friend has a house of 10,000 square feet and I don't, that's not a good jealousy. That jealousy only is going to bring to hatred because there's nothing I can do. I cannot afford a car like that. I cannot afford those jewelry. So when I'm jealous, I'm really just being making myself sad, making myself angry and making myself not to be a good friend with that friend. Because if I'm jealous of her then, or of him, I, I really don't start to dislike them because I say, why do they have it? Why don't I have it? This is not a good to be jealous. And it's something that I cannot acquire. Certain things we could acquire, certain things we can't, but we all can acquire to become better people.
So that's why if I'm jealous that somebody else is praying so well, when somebody else is more, I don't like to say the word more religious because all of us are religious, all of us are trying. Somebody else mm -hmm. is in a higher level than me. They can have guests for Shabbat and they can be so calm. They can get nervous. If somebody, they can help and they smile. They can do this. You know, they try to remember always to say the blessings before they eat. Why don't I remember? These are things that I can acquire. These are things that I can achieve if I really want. Those things are good to be jealous of. Because if I'm jealous that my friend is so calm and so happy and always likes to be positive, then I'm going to try to be like her and I'm going to try to be positive. But if I'm jealous that my friend has so much money in the bank, what will I do? I don't have it. What, what I'm going to go rob a bank? God forbid, what am I going to do? I, can, I don't have a job that can give me so much money. This is not a good thing. It's not good to be jealous of physical things, but it's good to be jealous of spiritual things. The word jealous doesn't look, sound so good, but to want to be like somebody who is higher than me, and the spiritual sense, because then I'm going to want to achieve it, and I'm going to try. It's all. It says that um, when on physical on physical things, you should always look at someone who has less than you. Yeah. And on spiritual things, you should always look at somebody who has more. So at times when things are hard, and you go, "Oh, why don't I have this? Why don't I have enough space? My house is not big enough." And then I'm thinking, "Wow, I have people that have." Many children that live in a very small house and all of a sudden I go, oh, my house is very big. If I'm jealous, why this person, oh, I don't have a big car. And you think, well, these people look at their car. Well, I'm not driving a Ferrari, I'm driving a Chrysler, but uh, but this person is driving, a, I don't know, even a old car from 20 years old. So you always look at somebody who has less and then you feel you're so wealthy. You have so much because look at all the people that have less. But obviously, when we look at mitzvot, you don't have to say, well, I'm doing Shabbat. That lady doesn't even light Shabbos candles. So I'm very good. No, no. You look at somebody, they light Shabbos candles, but they also do Kiddush. And they also invite people to their homes. And they also try to make it to shul once a, a week, <laughs> not once a year. And they also try to do this. I want to be like that friend that is doing so much. So then slowly but slowly, we're going to try to reach it. Wonderful, wonderful class. I learned so much tonight from all of you girls, just by listening, just by learning together, just by encouraging, encouraging each other that a small hole in the body is a big hole in the neshama. And that's very important for us because as we get older, as we grow all of us, we're not as strong and we think, ah, oh, it's not so important. No, you get up in the morning, you have to pray, but you should also exercise. You should also drink your juice. You should also eat healthy. You should also take a walk or whatever it is to be stronger. Because when I'm stronger, then my soul is going to be stronger because I'm going to be able to do many things. If God forbid somebody as a whole, if somebody is not well, they cannot do as many things. Obviously, it's not always in our power, but whatever it is in our hands, we tell Hashem, Hashem, give me health. Give me power, give me money, give me the stuff I need so I can serve you better. I'm not just using it for me to indulge myself, but I'm sharing it with other people so I can serve you better, so I can put a smile on somebody else's face. How nice it is when you buy someone a gift, when you give something to somebody and those people are so grateful and you know you made them happy. It's mm -hmm. better than you did it to yourself. You know, many times you want to eat something and then, you say, okay, I'm not going to eat it. I'll give it to someone else. And just to see the smile on the other person's face that you made them happy, it's worth so much more than eating it myself. I'm not hungry. It's okay. I'll eat another time. Yes. Isn't that so, Sabrina, right? It was nice. It was nice also to go to kosher restaurants and just, just see people, you know, two o'clock in the morning, people are buying, you know, there's like a chocolate. It's called, right? It's like 20, it's like a max 24. Yeah. But... It's all kosher food and nice food and tasty food, nice. right? It's nice. nice, very nice. Thank you so much, girls. We should all have a wonderful.